away. And let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Charles Murray at 142, and he is giving away nearly eight pounds to the Livingstone Bramble. Murray says, that's okay. Let's get this fight going. So uh, Murray, a natural at the age of 28, eight years younger than Bramble. He turned pro actually five years after Bramble had beaten Boom Boom Mancini for the world title. We are in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Uh, the rule standing eight count in effect. Three knockdown rule is not in effect. You cannot be saved by the bell scoring in a 10 point must scoring system. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Caesars Atlantic City, we go to the junior welterweight division. This bell scheduled for 10 rounds. When the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action is Tony Perez. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the multicolored trunks, weighing in at 150 pounds. He comes to us from St. Kitts in the Virgin Islands and brings a professional record of 38 victories with 18 losses and three draws, 24 of those 38 victories are by KO. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the former lightweight champion of the world, Livingstone, Razai Brenda. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trimmed with white, and weighing in at 142 pounds. His professional record, an outstanding one of 38 and 3 with 23 KOs. He currently holds the NABF title, not on the line tonight. A native of Rochester, New York, but now training and fighting for Mark Roberts Worldwide Sports. Here is the former junior welterweight champion of the world, Charles, the natural Murray. You already got your instructions and you're weighing them, right? Give me a good clean fight and I will not bother neither one of you. Two things you must remember. Obey my commands and most important, protect yourself at all times. Check hands. Good luck to you. Charles Murray was just rolling along as the junior welterweight champion, beating uh, Rodney Moore back in May of 93 with a couple of defenses against Juan Laporte and Courtney Hooper. Then he was upset by Jake Rodriguez. Soon after, lost another fight to Ray Oliveira. And uh, Murray was dumped out of the top ten. But he has uh, certainly reestablished himself with wins over Reggie Green, Tony Lopez, and the rematch over Jake Rodriguez. And uh, what Charles Murray has been doing now has been more of a proactive fighter. He was becoming a very reactive fighter. Now he's taking the fight to his opponent. Before he just wasn't fighting, he was too defensive against some of these guys, looking to showboat a little bit too much. And his veteran trainer, Tommy Parks, who has returned to Charles for the last five fights, of which Murray has won all five. Parks was looking at some of the, the film, and he just told Charles, hey, you got to fight him. Get out of this boxing stuff. And remember, you can box and be aggressive. And uh, Charles Murray has done a 160 and uh, once again looks like one of the most attractive junior welterweights in the world. Oh, yeah, he's made a lot of changes. He says, in the ring, I'm more relaxed now. I throw timed punches. I'm not waiting. I'm more professional in the ring. He describes his style as more relaxed, a boxer, an artist, to hit and not get hit. His best punch is the jab. That fight was Jake Rodriguez. And he lost the first one. He said, just one of those days, he lost not only the fight, but also lost his championship. He said, I was flat. Everything was wrong. Even the day of the fight, I got stuck in the elevator and was not at the fight on time. Yes, red flag. Yeah, just where everything went wrong. And in the fight, he was not assertive enough. Livingstone Bramble. Wow. Long time career. 38, 18, and 3 with 24 KOs. He says in his style, he doesn't use the angles as much, he's more blocking and countering, tries to make opponents miss and then counter them. His best punch is the left jab. He switches from righty to lefty and you see him fighting in that left-hand stance now, only for defensive purposes, he says. You know, I love listening to Michael Buffer introduce Livingstone Bramble. 
because I keep saying he's going to say, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to bramble. Well, I think the Livingstone, if he gets himself back into a uh, main event, and he might just hear it. Now measuring is Charles Murray. Bramble was uh, once one of boxing's top fighters uh, back in the mid-80s when he was battling it out in two fights with Boom Boom Mancini winning the WBA Lightweight Championship. Beat Tyrone Crawley before losing the crown to Edwin Rosario. He actually once had a record of 30 wins, 3 losses, with 2 draws. But in the last 7 years, since 1990, he is 8-15-1. down. Charles Murray listening to his compadre, Tommy Parks. Outstanding trainer, former welterweight fighter back in the middle of 40s. Had a record of 30-3, Tommy Parks did. Also, that's uh, Percy Richardson. They were in cotton swab in his mouth. And you can suspect he is a pet man. And that's why the squad's still on the way. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 In the black trunks, and Livingstone Bramble, the multicolored. We last saw Livingstone in uh, August. He was a 10 rounder to Rafael Ruelas. And in that fight, you could see, champ, that with Bramble and his experience, his great courage and, and strong will enables him now to hang in there enough to take an incredible beating. Yeah, you know, it really works against him because uh, Rafael Ruelas did a job. He had Bramble battered and bruised and bloodied, but uh, he hung in there, never went down, and went the 10-round uh, distance. One of the tremendous pride from St. Kitts and Virgin Islands. Yeah, sometimes too tough for his own good. He stands there and accepts that jab. You know, in, in your career, when, when you're on the other side, it's easier to get hit with the punches than try to move out of the way of them. And that's when fighters get into a lot of trouble, a lot of damage. Just getting standing there and get hit. See how he's taking these shots? It's easier to take the punch than to try to move out of the way of them. But all these punches, they're going to they're gonna add up, and they hurt. They hurt me just watching it. However, he has that hair there that might act as a shield, too, kind of pad. Well, now we're asking for a little more from these two. Yeah, they really want more from Murray. Kind of staying back. Seems hard. This is a nice jab from Murray. The natural, they call him. Coach Rob Johnson gave him that name when he first started. He says it's because I just relax and box naturally. He says he's a natural when he just gets into that rhythm and his zone. He really knows what to do before it actually happens. Murray started boxing at 15. He was 65 and 5 as an amateur. He fought and lost to Todd Foster in the Olympic box off. And of course, turned pro at 19, now he's 38 and 3 with 23 KOs. This, this is not the way you beat Charles Murray. The, the two losses that he had that had him fall out of the uh, world contenders were against fighters who pressured him. And in those fights, Murray was unable to uh, handle that pressure and was out hustled and out punched. And that's uh, exactly what Bramble is not doing here. He's giving Murray the room to work. Hey, what do you need? I want to mic you up. Hey, 
Well, the kind of instructions he has been getting, move your head, keep your hands up. The corner also well aware of the last fight, Ruelas, and the fights prior to that, with Bramble has lost five of six. Yeah, so many times fighters are not realistic with, with themselves. And you, you look at these fights and they go out there thinking they're winning rounds when they're really not. And in speaking with, with Livingstone, he says, I'm still competitive in fights. I, I just don't get the dude. Well, when you get the dude right on the end of the nose from Charles Murray in this fight, he's been Murray, there's been no offense from Randall at all. And his trainers, the people around him, perhaps see the, the picture. But go along with Randall and their instructions now, just be more defensive, don't get hurt. Well, and yet, have a world champion in there, too, or a former world champion. A lot of times, the former world champion knows more about boxing than some of the corner people. And, of course, the fools, they're, they're making money in that corner. They right. don't want to upset the yeah. champion. But, but fooling himself uh, yeah. here to continue. Right. You know, the ego comes into play, something, of course, is coming into play in, in Sugar Ray Leonard's comeback. It is all Murray now, yeah. scoring upstairs. Now, Bramble with a rush. Scheduled for 10 rounds. When his punches don't have the debilitating effects that the punches that Murray has, because Murray's putting his weight behind every shot. And I know if Murray was really flurry, a Murray flurry, I know the referee is looking for an opportunity. The referee sees what we see, and he realizes that Livingstone Randall's had a great career, but it may be over. So yeah, Livingstone Bramble is one of those fighters who's still getting a paycheck, but really earns it. Yeah, so it, it, it's very dangerous in the sport of boxing. In this sport, you, you really take a beating, and this is where you take most of He doesn't like to move, move out of the way of punches. He doesn't roll with his shots anymore. As a young fighter, when he beat Ray Boo Boo Mancini as a world champion, so he trained very hard. The control was important early in the fight. In the sixth round, Ray hit me so hard, it hurt my big toe. He's getting his big toe hurt in this fight. of punching, keeping the pressure on. Murray, you know when you have those long dreadlocks like that, you get hit in the head, your head flies, the punch looks even harder because of your hair. And Bramble comes out for more. Round number five, the scheduled 10 round fight. Junior welterweights going in to this fight during the week, but as it turns out, Charles Murray at 142, a couple of pounds over the junior welterweight limit, and Bramble at around 149, a few pounds over the welterweight limit. So here you have Charles from the National Murray, who was campaigning as a junior welterweight, former junior welterweight fan, who was actually fighting a junior middleweight. in the shutout. You know, in the ball game, Murray using his strength, cornering up Bramble, but not cleaning up. When you get a man in the corner or his back against the ropes, especially in a fight like this, where you're winning every round easily, 
you work into the corner, that's when you pick up your best score, your, your best points. You're going to score against him. But Nari is just content with taking that step back. He is a patient fighter. He doesn't go into fights looking for KOs. Unless he gets more air time. Which, of course, is the top priority going into a fight of this nature. But once he started turning it around, he has been looking vicious in the ring. That's Reggie Green took him out of two. Tony Lopez, he won a 12-rounder, but uh, Rockham Sockham was Charles Murray in that fight. Jade Rodriguez, who he lost the championship to, took out his seventh. And very sharp, great movement. Right now, just studying a little bit too much as this one early in the back pocket. As his opponent, Livingstone Bramble at bay, backpedaling. And Charles Murray can still uh, turn up even more like that. Sharp, quick, snappy punches. He's shutting up Bramble easily. Yeah, see, he, he, can can still still he, can, he can still move in. He can still even move in closer. Down the way on Bramble. However, he knows how crafty and sticky Livingstone Bramble is. It's an experienced fighter. Perhaps trying to set a trap for Murray. protection from Bramble. That was a good right hand. You just flip those gloves. But uh, Park wants to get that guard down. Stalking is Zamari. His left way down. But Bramble so far out of position here. And not the speed that he had been known for. This man in his heyday, one of the pit bulls in boxing. He knew you were in for a war. He stepped in against Livingstone Bramble. And Livingstone Bramble, that was so hard to fight because he was elusive. He would always come in in shape. You couldn't, you couldn't hit him, and he hit very hard. But uh, now fighting as a in the welterweight division, in the over welterweight division, he has lost the speed, lost the snap. He's lost the fire now. It appears as though he's just making the circuit to pick up a paycheck. There's that jab in the body. Tommy Parks between rounds asking the jab to go downstairs. Murray now just playing with Bramble. Just playing with Murray, but this is not what fans want to see. They don't want to see, they want to see knockouts. They want to see serious, focused fighters. I think this is an opportunity for Charles Murray to really close this show. That's going to take combinations, going to take backing Brown over the ropes and scoring. If that's in the ropes, then he doesn't back top. He doesn't really close the gap. That's a good combination from Bramble. Nice uppercut from him. 
You noticed that during that round, most of the attention from the crowd here at the Atlantic City Civic Center, not focused on the ring, but this is exactly what was happening. That's what you call a Camacho commotion. What is that? What is he wearing? Uh, Hector making his arrival. And as you can see, he's trying to, trying to sneak through the crowd so nobody would see him. Trying to go back there. Do I feel, do I feel like, oh, I overdress. I didn't know I was going to wear that. Do I feel we have another Oliver McCall situation on our hands tonight? Macho losing it. Your hands are like this. He's closing in and I'm slapping. Close him up. He's slapping around here, digging me. I'm slapping around here. Close your fist up. You'll feel more like a... Like a... Come on, here we go. Let's go. Let's go. Fans may start to getting a little proactive in this fight as we move on to round number seven. They see this as a completely one-sided affair so far. And Charles Murray to, to pick things up. Bramble is certainly proving that he can take the shots thrown his way. All of them, many of them. You don't want to fight proving that you can take the shots. You have to prove that your opponent can take the shots. That's what wins fights for you. And that is why Brambo has lost five of his last six. In the 10-round distance or more, 27 different times, he knows how to go the rounds, knows how to rest, knows how to relax when he needs to. He can fight out of, out of that shell occasionally. That's why he's keeping Murray at a distance. Murray really picked it up back in that third round. And Murray all the way from the first. Rebel has two victories in his last eight fights. And those two wins have come up against fighters who are 8-9 and 1-7. championship at the age of 23 in 1984. It's been 11 years since uh, he's owned the title. Losing the lightweight crown to Edwin Rosario. Being stopped in the second round. A rare occasion for Bramble to be stopped and uh, actually he was down in that. Inside of to go on the seventh. It was a time when Brambo said he was having many personal problems, wife, kids, management, and he said he was coming in the eye and that fight with Ed, Edwin Rosario. I thought that might have been part of the personal problem. That may have been it too. He, maybe he likes getting hit. Maybe the wife and kids did hit him. But part of the <laughs> help me out here. Well, Give me used to getting hit. Uh, he also won. Bramble did an NABF title over Harold Brazier. One defense and then he lost it to Santos Cardona. 12 round decision back in uh, February of 1990. Well, consider the fact that many nights this could have been the main event. Hi, 
think that Livingstone Bramble has been living on borrowed time in this fight. So hopefully we'll see more action from Murray and more pressure from Murray. Livingstone, uh, I guess, is not ready for Bramble. He's not Bramble tonight, you're right. But uh, Charles is Murray so far through eight rounds. Livingstone Bramble becoming a Timex fighter. He takes a licking and keeps on picking. She's worldwide on the back of the Murray's parts. I guess those are, those are the worldwide parts. <laughs> Wondering what they look like in shorts. <laughs> Charles Murray turns on the speed early here in the eighth. In the cruise with a minute to go. No cuts. No swelling around the eyes of Bramble for good reason. He's taking most of those shots right to the right to the forehead, right between the eyes. You know, and when you can hit a, a fighter with that jab, you can reach six, seven inches further with your right hand if you step into it. Or even if you want to land a power jab, you know. Bramble is pretty crafty. Sometimes you can't get that right hand off of him real clear, really clean. But then you just really put a power punch behind the jab. Really step in and push off that back foot. Use that back toe as leverage and crack him with the left jab. Charles Barry beating the Bramble to every punch. set that, that opportunity up. You have to, like I said, you have to be like you're expecting the knockout, looking for the knockout, wanting the knockout. Oh, what is the combination from Murray and, and Bramble backs up? Oh, it's going to have to be a lot more than that for Bramble to go down. Yeah, he is so tough. You know, or he has this misconception that you don't get paid Unless you go to this place. I think it's more than that. Livingstone, one of the uh, toughest customers. Whoa! Hamilton Bramble. And dramatically turns us around here on the night. A good jab is so effective in this sport. He's got a, a respectable right hand. He has, you saw the, the hooks from him, those triple hooks. He really has a lot of nice skills. And I think for him now, at this point in his career, he and his trainer have to work on how to get fighters like Brian Ball out of there. He's a survivor. <laughs> I was sitting... And that's why he's not knocking out the fighters, but living some bramble. You gotta, you gotta use combinations to knock fighters out, too. Very few fighters, very few have that one-punch KO power, that deafening one-shot. Yeah, right down. Right now, uh, Murray was toying with Bramble, freezing him. And, uh, Murray just started to throw some punches, but just see the incredible skill and talent possessed by Charles Murray at the age of 28, just becoming into his prime. Sean's suggesting, though, that he find a way to take out the likes of Livingstone Bramble to put all of that together. Murray enjoys the entertaining fashion of it. Oh, he loves it. He calls himself a boxer, and he loves 
performing inside the ring. And he has been the, the man who has carried the action on this fight. It certainly has not been Bramble. However, Bramble is taking way too much of a beating. And I think that Murray has to start ending fights like this. He can't allow for the Brambles of the World of Survivor types to go the distance with him. Not really going that extra few inches to punch through your opponent. Bramble unleashes his best shot at the final bell. Not exactly a standing ovation as this one is wrapped up, but Livingstone Bramble does what we figured he would do. Come in here and take Charles Murray to a 10-round distance. Now, do you think Livingstone in that corner thinks he's, he's won the fight? You know, so many aging fighters like Livingstone, the circuit fighters, they go through fights and they, they think they win. Not time, but my body, he said. No. So he doesn't think he won, but the excuses start. And Charles Murray gets another win over Livingstone Bramble. And worked on his jab. I hope he didn't hurt his hand. Unanimous decision, Charles the Natural Murray. So that was more than a shutout.